Good morning and welcome to St Margaret's online service. My name is Matt and it's great to have you with us today. Whether you've been a part of the church family here for years or if you're new to us, um, it's great to have you with us and we pray that you have a really blessed time this morning. Today we are continuing our series in Mark's Gospel and uh, this morning Amy will be speaking to us on the parable of the sower. Um, so we're very much looking forward to that. Um, and also I, I need to remind you that we are continuing with our Faith Matters course um, on Thursday evening uh, at 7.45 for uh, just for an hour. And we've had a great couple of weeks so far. So I'd really encourage you if um, you're part of the church family or if you're new to faith, um, do come along on Thursday to our Faith Matters course uh, on Zoom. We would love to see you there. And just to start our service, um, I'm just going to pray before we go into our first song. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, no matter what our morning has been like, we just want to take a moment and focus on you and just pray that you would settle our hearts and minds as we look to worship you this morning. Would you be with us wherever we are? And pray that we would meet with you, Lord, um, that your spirit would speak to us and that we would be changed. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. So without further ado, let's have our first song.
Now we've come to the point in our service where we confess our sins to the Lord. Dear God, we are sorry that we often don't put you first. We think about what we want instead. We don't always put others ahead of ourselves. Instead, we think about what, what works best for us. Please forgive us. Help us to put you first. Father, forgive us and shine, and shine your, your light, light in, in the, the darkness. darkness. Heavenly Father, sometimes we aren't very nice. Please forgive us for times when we use unkind words. Help the words that come out of our mouths to be used to encourage others, not to tear them down. Father, forgive us and, and shine, shine your, your light, light in, in the, the darkness. darkness. Dear Lord, please forgive us for not doing things we sh know we should. Sometimes we're in a hurry or just don't want to do the right thing. Sometimes we do something wrong simply choosing to do nothing at all. Please forgive us. Help us to see the good that we ought to do and choose to do it. Help us choose to serve and obey out of love. Father, forgive us and, and shine your light, light in, in the darkness. darkness. God hears us and forgives us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Stories of the Bible The Parable of the Farmer This is Jesus hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. One day, Jesus went and sat beside the sea. A great crowd gathered around him. Oh, hey, everyone. So he got in a boat and told them many things in parables. Okay, listen to this. He told them this story. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil among rocks. The seed began to grow quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When Jesus had said this, he called out, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Hey, Jesus! Yeah? Later, the disciples came to Jesus and asked what this parable meant. Jesus said, The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are treated badly for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the desire for other things. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Good morning, everybody. Well, it was great to hear from Ola last week, wasn't it, about Jesus's power. Jesus healed people, 
he cast out demons and when he said things, they happened. Jesus had incredible power, didn't he? Well, this week we're going to be thinking a little bit more about what Jesus did, but in his teaching. Now, when Jesus spoke, he often spoke in parables. A parable is a little bit like an easy story to understand that helps us to understand something a bit more complicated. And this is the way that Jesus often spoke to people when he met them. It was a way of getting them to think about more important things, to help lead that conversation forward, but also to understand a bit more what God is like and how we should live. So in the reading that we had, was Jesus teaching people how to grow crops? Was this his top tips on how to grow the best corn or how to most efficiently use your crop seeds so that you don't waste any? Well, no. Jesus was actually talking here about something more important and he explains this later in the passage to his disciples, doesn't he? The message that he came to bring was about who God is and that God wants to have a relationship with us. Jesus spoke to thousands of people telling them about the kingdom of God and what God was like. But though everybody heard the same message, they had different reactions to it, didn't they? It's a bit like the words with Jesus were like seeds thrown to the ground for planting. Now I've got a few seeds here with me. I don't know whether you can see them, my little seeds. So the words that Jesus was saying was like these little seeds that were thrown to the ground for planting. And we know that when a plant is in the right environment, when it's got good soil, it grows, doesn't it? Now these seeds might not necessarily grow into this, but this is the biggest plant I could find in our house. <laughs> so even those little tiny seeds can grow, can't they? They multiply, they get bigger. And this is what they were designed to be. They were designed to grow into big plants and multiply, to keep multiplying. I'm just gonna move this slightly or I can't see. But in this passage, there were some seeds that fell on the path, didn't they? And the path was hard ground that people walked on. Any seeds that landed here would sink, wouldn't sink into the soil. It would remain on the top of the soil. Like this ground, some people are hard to the word of God. They don't want it to enter their lives. Maybe they don't give it time. Maybe they don't want to think about it or just choose not to accept it. And like in the parable, seed that's left on the top of the ground got gobbled up by the birds, didn't it? It didn't have the opportunity to enter the soil and the opportunity to grow. Other seed fell on the stony ground, ground that had a thin layer of soil on the top, but it actually had hard rock underneath. And in soil like this, the seed would grow, it would sprout initially, but with nowhere for the roots to go, for their water and nutrients, the shoots would quickly wither in the sun. They wouldn't grow. And Jesus is talking here about people that can be initially excited to hear God's word, but this excitement burns out quickly. When things get tough or the excitement just dies, they go back to their old ways. This might be a bit like going to a festival like New Wine, somewhere that you really enjoy, you listen to the word of God, you're excited um, about Jesus and about what it is to live as a Christian. But when you get back to real life and when things get difficult again, giving up on God and going back to doing things your own way. It's great to be excited about what God's done and how much he loves us but our faith must be rooted in more than that to flourish. It must be rooted in more than just a feeling or another person, maybe a church or a type of worship music. These things in themselves, though they're great, they can't sustain us. They don't sustain a faith and enable us to grow. We need to be rooted in God in order for us to fully accept him to be able to persevere in difficult times and for our faith to be fully rooted in him. 
Some seed was thrown, was thrown? It was thrown, it was also sown among the thorns. The seed grew, but was choked by the thorns around it. This is like people who become Christians, but are over influenced by the world. Maybe money becomes their focus or worrying about what people think of them and it keeps them from growing towards God. Sometimes we can feel a bit like that, can't we? Where we can be so worried about worldly things that we don't receive the nutrients from God. We might look like Christians on the outside and go to church, but actually we never really grow and we don't bear fruit. Finally though, Jesus talks about the seed that is sown in good soil. This seed grows just beyond that little shoot. It grows bigger and bigger and multiplies over and over again. And it makes something, let's bring back the plant. <laughs> it can grow into something as big as this plant, which trust me, it's a lot bigger in real life than it maybe looks on the screen. People like this hear the word of God, they accept it and they try to follow it. And we don't always get it right. We might make mistakes along the way. In fact, we all make mistakes along the way, don't we? But ultimately, we want to know God more and we want to follow him. We have a desire to follow him. And God will help us as we grow and as we speak the truth about God. We are also part of God's mission to plant seeds in other people's hearts to make more of these plants. We're not responsible for the outcome of that planting, but we are responsible for speaking the truth, the word of God. In verse 21, it says, is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? When you choose a lamp for your home, do you test to see how well it does under the bed? Maybe not. Or do you put it on a table so its light can shine and you can see how far that light spreads? God didn't light the lamp of faith in you so that it would remain hidden. He lit it so that it would shine, that it would shine the light of Jesus in the darkness. Now that's quite a lot of information to take in for one day, isn't it? So let me leave you with a question. How can we move our hearts to be more like the good soil that accepts the word of God and accepts Jesus wholeheartedly into our lives? We're going to have five minutes now just to reflect on that. If you're a creative person, you might want to have a drawing, make a drawing of a flower. You could put in the petals what you could do to help you to grow in God. What do you think you could do to move your heart towards being the good soil that hears Jesus? Around the flower, I'd encourage you to write down as well what the outcome of that would be. What's the effect of the seed that has grown and multiplied in your heart? If you're not up for drawing this morning though, don't worry, do feel free to just spend this time to reflect yourself or you could talk through the question together as a family and see what you come up with. So let's take five minutes now, just spend some time uh, thinking on these questions and, and what we've learned this morning, and then we'll come back together for our next song.
to enter a time of prayer now. Father, help those working on the NHS on the front line. We pray that you give them peace right now as it can be quite stressful deal dealing with so many patients in hospital. We also pray for those that, who are sick, we pray that you'd heal them and also for the families who are worried about those who are suffering from <laughs> coronavirus or who are mourning because they've lost a loved one to the illness. Amen. Dear God, we pray for schools and the hard time that students and teachers are going through right now. Pray for that the teachers will be able to prepare all the work and that lessons will go smoothly. I also pray that the, the children themselves and the students, including us, will be able to engage in the lessons and that it will go as good as it can. And also help give um, the parents the patience they need to care after their children maybe whilst doing work as well. Amen. We also pray for wisdom for the government right now. For our government here in the UK making decisions about nurseries and school and when to open shops and things. And also for the government in the US that we pray for peace right now um, due to these protests and things that things would calm down a bit and that Biden would become the next president peacefully. Amen. Well, it's been great 
to gather together again this morning. Do please remember the Faith Matters course on Thursday at 7.45 p.m. But before we have our final song, just a blessing to close. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide us and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, to finish, we're going to have our final song. Thank you.